Hello, my name is Tammy Ritalik. I'm the Chief Nursing Officer and Vice President of Patient Care Services at Hebrew Rehabilitation Center. And I'm here to share with you some considerations and some thoughts around when is the right time for long-term care and some information of what you should know and what you should consider when you make this very personal decision. I wanted to start our conversation from Dr. Atul Gawande, the author of Being Mortal. And his quote says, our most cruel failure in how we treat the sick and the aged is the failure to recognize that they have priorities beyond merely being safe and living longer. And I have found that the more time I spend in geriatrics, the more important that this concept is. We find as people age, their ability to be autonomous and to have dignity far outweigh the safety risk. However, as family members, our loved ones are important to us. And we believe that safety is an important piece. So the goal of long-term care settings is to figure out that important balance between both the safety, but also honoring the autonomy and the dignity of our elders. When considering what matters most then to older people, um, certainly health is an important one, family and other close relationships and the ability to continue to maintain those. Maintaining basic activities of daily living, and we refer to that, that is dressing, bathing, um, having meals, and then also remaining independent and enjoying leisure time activities, which is also meaningful and important to all of us. We find in, in our types of senior living that many people ask questions about, well, what are the choices? And they basically fall into these four categories. There's independent living, which is really, as it states, independent. These are seniors who are able to care for themselves independently. They're out in the community and they decide to have independent living where they can be their seniors of similar, um, similar abilities. Assisted living provides a little bit more support, still honoring the social component. Memory support offers a more support for the memory issues. And finally, there is skilled nursing or long-term care, which will be the topic of our conversation today. And this, this provides much more support both for medically as well as for long-term uh, chronic issues. You know, nursing homes are still an important resource even during this time of COVID-19. And I think this obviously complicates things and makes them more challenging. But but there really are inherent dangers in not seeking appropriate care. As we found during the pandemic, um, many of the social support systems that our caregivers rely on haven't been available. The caregiver stress then increases and it can have its own negative effect on the physical and mental health of the caregiver and their loved ones, particularly if there's dementia or memory issues involved. And then even during pandemic, a high quality long term care setting can be the best option for patient families because of all these reasons that we mentioned above. So how do you know when long-term care is the best choice for you or your loved one? And this is both a very personal decision and it's typically driven from both cognitive and physical declines that you may see in your loved one. So what are these considerations? Well, certainly there's health and safety concerns. You know, oftentimes it's seen as age, there's chronic illnesses that can no longer be managed by an older person at home. And this may lead to hospitalizations. There's falls that are, are certainly concerning and can have a significant impact on their quality of life. Impaired cognitive function where there's more confusion and memory issues. And certainly uh, you become very concerned if they become unsafe around appliances, such as the microwave or the stove. And finally, wandering can, can also be a significant safety concern as they leave um, the house during times of, of hot weather or cold weather, or they may be wandering around the home in a way that becomes a, a big concern for families. Two pieces that we don't often think about though are loneliness and depression. 
we often all understand the very tangible components of these concerns that I've just spoken about. But there's less conversation about these two areas. Loneliness. 43% of older people feel lonely on a regular basis. Even if you have someone stopping in in the home, um, oftentimes it's not enough. They feel after, the, after you leave or after a neighbor or someone visits, they can have this profound sense of loneliness. Unfortunately, the mortality risk increases by 45% of those who recognize that they're lonely. And then interestingly, that loneliness is more dangerous than obesity and can be as damaging to health as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. So we under consider that loneliness is something of grave concern when you're deciding whether or not long-term care is the right setting. Loneliness may also create depression. Depression affects more than 6.5 million of the 35 million Americans who are 65 years or older. And we often see late life depression increase that increases both the medical illness and further cognitive decline. Unfortunately, depression is the single most significant risk factor for suicide in the elderly population. And we do believe that as people are isolated, their depression could worsen. And certainly it is something that we all must consider when we're deciding what's the next best step. Now, long-term care certainly offers the medical model, which I think most people are very well aware of. It's around the clock, 24-7 nursing care. And there's a geriatric care team that's in place. And these team members work together um, to help make sure that they manage the medical conditions, but also well, as well as meet both the psychosocial needs of individuals, including the ability to address any cognitive decline. What is less known is that it is the responsibility and the commitment of a geriatric care team to make sure that each person in their care has an individualized plan. And these are really built on knowing one's life story. What are their needs? What are their abilities? And, and what are their interests? It is really important that we get to know the person, who they are, what they've done in their life in order for the best care to be provided. In addition, the medical model. As an added benefit, one of the things that have proved to be most um, beneficial for, for families is that staff can continuously monitor individuals and pick up any subtle changes in their condition that might go unnoticed. If you are living with someone, even if you're living with them, if you do not have medical knowledge, it is very challenging to understand the subtle changes that if picked up quickly might prevent further decline or hospitalization that could go along with worsening medical issue. So as we always suggest is that the staff is there 24 seven, they're, they're able to pick up on these and it is something to consider. But yet, even though those exist, we still we still realize that there's resistance to long-term care. And why is that? I think in all honesty, families picture what nursing homes used to be. Um, but today, decades later, there's been decades of work done that we understand that long-term care environments are much more progressive. Not only is their physical appearance more home-like and less hospital or institutional-like, we recognize that their homes, that it's about quality of life, and it's not just about quality of care. When people make the decision, which is an often a challenging and difficult one, and they see the benefits of long-term care, we often hear, I moved my mom because I couldn't take care of her, and I thought that long-term care was the last resort. But then we talk to them, and they often report transformations they see. They see that their mom or their father or their loved one is now able to participate and to socialize. And because of the efforts of the care team and surrounding them with the necessary support systems, we find that there's less disruption, less uh, hospitalizations and emergency room trips. They're seeing more physical and social engagement in ways that was not possible um, in their home. And they begin to reestablish a patient-child relationship. We hear so often that the 
the strain of caring for a loved one in their home who has medical or cognitive concerns or maybe both, the, the child begins to feel um, so stressed that their quality of their relationship can suffer. And when you allow the support systems to be around someone in long-term care, they feel they're able to be a son, a daughter again, and they're able to enjoy a very um, special relationship at that point. And what we like to say is that both people, both the, the senior and the child or, um, or a loved one, they all are able to get their love back. High quality long-term care focuses on what's possible and not not what's lost and, and what does that mean? Um, caregivers in long-term care have a real unique opportunity. They get to meet your loved one where they're at. They, in the beginning, do not know what their life story was. So when we look at a senior, we look at all the possibilities. We look at where they are presently and how we can build on that. And that is a really interesting perspective that we find families often say, I, I I so appreciate that perspective because it's hard when you've lived, when you've known what someone your whole life, you think about who they might not be or what skills or what deficits they might have. And by having a care team surround both of you, you're able to then um, see what the possibilities are. And I wanna share a brief case study with you about what it looks like when you focus on strength. Um, many people don't know, and this is something as I learned about geriatrics that I found really pretty remarkable, is that the creative part of your brain is kind of tucked deep inside, and it's often untouched by things like Alzheimer's and dementia. Though someone may experience memory loss or difficulty word finding that can be associated with the dementia and the Alzheimer's, this little part of the brain kind of sits in there. And so our care team, our life enhancement specialist and our expressive therapy specialist and the research understand that being able to engage in that part of that brain can actually ease behavioral symptoms like dementia by reducing anxiety, agitation, and depression. It can also boost mood and self-esteem. And in some cases, it can help stimulate the memory. So one of the examples I wanted to share with you is this beautiful, very vibrant picture. And here's an example of how the arts can help seniors with dementia express themselves when they're no longer able to put something into words. This particular picture was actually done by a woman we will call Joanne, who was 79 year old and she was a retired nurse. And she had never painted before in her life. But the care team worked with her, got to know her, and they soon found that she might have an aptitude for artwork and painting. And so they worked with her individually at first, and they found that she could draw these most beautiful, vibrant um, paintings. And then she was slowly able to work within a group during a group art therapy session. Before long, Joanne, who had been a bit withdrawn, was able to also socialize with those in the group, despite the fact that she had word finding difficulty, despite that she had cognitive limitations. And the interactions that she was able to provide in that was very meaningful and powerful. And the family were, were then now being able to see how there was these strengths of something that she had never done before in her lifetime. So then this becomes an enjoyable situation where families can embrace this new skill and Joanne can feel less anxiety as she's able to express herself through artwork and she's able to establish support systems through others in her art therapy group. So the question becomes then, are you ready to consider long-term care? Maybe you think it is something that you, you need to follow further, and we certainly can help. What our long-term chronic care service provides is we're licensed as a long-term chronic care hospital, and we are able to give more comprehensive medical care because we have on-site physicians and geriatric specialists. 
we also have an on-site lab and pharmacy. In addition, we have a very comprehensive group of geriatric trained specialists in internal medicine, palliative care, psychiatry, neurology, physiatry, and it continues. We also have very state-of-the-art and professional rehabilitation services that include physical, occupational health, uh, occupational and expressive therapists, speech and language pathologists. From an individualized approach, we're also able to support the, support the emotional, social, and spiritual needs of our seniors by providing life-enhancing activities and certainly personalized nutrition services. Questions that you need to ask yourself. Is choosing the right living environment for a loved one may, it is difficult and the decision is not intellectual but, emo, but emotional. And we really encourage that if you're beginning to think this is something that you might need to consider, it's best to do that before crisis happens. We really encourage people to take their time to be able to, um, even though it's in the time of COVID, there's often virtual tours, there's websites, there's people you can talk to, but to do it proactively so that it can be done in a thoughtful way and you don't feel that you're making this urgent um, crisis decision. So you assess the needs of your loved one. Are you sensing that there's more medical conditions that aren't able to be managed and you're starting to see that they may need to go to the physicians more and more often or perhaps even trips to the emergency room? Are you concerned that cognitively there's further decline that has gotten you worried? And are you also worried that becoming withdrawn or isolated because of the minimal interaction they're able to experience within their homes? As I mentioned, when you're planning it, be proactive and plan early. And what we also tell people, it's not just about the quality of care, but it's also about the quality of life that is provided. Typically, when you've been pre-COVID, we encourage you to visit very much like a university campus or a college. They're all very different. But in this day and age in COVID, you certainly can provide a Zoom meeting and you can certainly get a feel for the environment. You know, what kind of feelings do you get from the staff you are interacting with? And certainly, you want to ask questions are, are the residents well-dressed? Are they dressed for ever, during the day? And when your conversations are occurring, does staff feel happy? And, and do you get the sense that the seniors are formal uh, in, in their decision making? And do you get the feeling that the staff just really embraces um, the care of seniors? There are other criteria to consider. Um, you know, what is their staffing model? And that, again, can be asked through Zoom meetings, virtual tours, you know, who is the medical team? What does that comprise of? How am I involved with planning? You want to be part of an, or, of a, of an organization that understands that the families are as much of a partner as the loved one. What their programs are offered and how will your loved one be physically, mentally, and socially engaged? What are their interests? And be open to other things that you may not even know that your loved one might like to participate in. And certainly spiritual support becomes a big consideration for many of our seniors and their families. And you may want to know what possibilities are available for that as well. Safety during COVID-19. Uh, this is certainly one of the bigger questions that um, you need to ask knowing that the pandemic is, is not going away anytime soon. Is the facility prepared? What is their infection control plan? Does the staff have access to required protective person, personal protective equipment? Are they trained? Are there testing policies in place for the, for the residents and for the employees? Can the facility isolate people who may be infected? How do you screen for this? And how will my, my loved one be mentally and physically engaged, even in a time of social distancing or isolation? And lastly, as you're thinking proactively in whether or not long-term care is the right decision, there are different ways that long-term care can be paid for. Certainly there's private pay, but there's also mass health and Medicaid 
oftentimes there is an application uh, process in place for, that needs to be done. So being proactive, if that is in researching it and understanding that process is an important step as well. And then finally, there's long-term care insurances that have different requirements, being able to research them in advance and understanding what those requirements are in a ton of non-crisis is certainly a much better way to make this final decision. There are resources that we provide for you should you have other questions. As we said, we know this is a difficult um, decision to make and we encourage you to be thoughtful about that decision making and, and encourage you to consider some of these additional resources. I wanna thank you for your time and I do hope that you are able to have the space and the pre-planning necessary to make the decision that best fits you and your loved one's situation. I wanna thank you for considering and thinking about how long-term care can be a bridge and an important support for your loved one during these most difficult times. Thank you and have a nice day.